We need to get as far away as possible. There's one thing you guys never seem to remember. Why? Harlem? It's mine. It's mine. Oh uh, yeah, what's going on fam? It's your man VKJ and yes, I'm back with another video. This is for Godfather Harlem, Season 3, Episode 5, The Recap. This is called The Angel of Death and yes, this one was pretty intense fam. Bumpy reveals who he truly is and yeah, he loses a lot and Mamie sees it all. Before we get started, make sure you check out all my episode recaps so you get caught up on everything so you don't miss anything. So let's get into episode five, recap for Godfather of Harlem. So hopefully you've hit that like button and definitely subscribed as well. As we get into it, we wake up to a beautiful face of Mamie looking down on Bumpy as he's waking up out of his slumber, right? And yeah, she's like, it's time to wake up, time to wake up. I mean, who wouldn't want to wake up to that beautiful face, right? So next we cut to a scene and Bumpy's in the kitchen drinking his little coffee or whatever. And he's looking down at the paper and it says, the angel of death comes to Harlem. And she's like, yeah, did you see the paper? Did you see that headline? And he's like, yeah, the angel of death. Rawr, right? So he's kind of making fun of the paper, of the headline, because it's about him, right? And she's like, oh, you're so silly, so silly, right? So then we cut to another scene, and yeah, Bumpy walks in with that same paper, and he's like, yo, is he here? Is he here? And he's looking for Frenchie, right? Because Frenchie's supposed to be coming to town. Mansour supposed to be coming to town. And he's so happy to see him because he's bringing the doji. He puts the paper down and still says the angel of death, right? So he gives him a hug. He's really happy to see him because, again, once he brings that doji, Bumpy's going to control all of Harlem. So he's really excited to see him. You know he already has the money. He's like, yeah, so I'm ready, man. You got the doji. We're ready. We're going to buy everything. He's like, okay. He's like, but first... Listen, we got to test it out, right? So who do they bring in? They bring in our boy from Raising Canaan, Sam I Am. I mean, Sam was alive in the 60s too, man. Sam, Sam, all, all that crack is keeping him alive, right? So they test it out on him. He's like, you know, the number one crackhead, number one, you know, junkie. And he's testing now. He's like, oh, he gets up. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, stay in your seat, stay in your seat, right? He's like, that's the best I've ever had, right? <laughs> you know how Sam does it. And he falls out on the ground, right? They go to check him out. Nat goes to check him out. He's like, yo, he did. He did. So he died on the spot. And he's like, yo, he's, he's dead. He's like, well, everybody dies, right? He's like, what are you talking about, man? If I'm going to buy this stuff, you know, I don't want people dying. I want them to come back for more. He said, listen, everybody's going to die. We just don't know when. So Bumpy looks down at the newspaper. Remember, it said the angel of death. And it changes from the symbol of the angel of death. And then it turns into Bumpy's picture. So he's like, what? And then Sam wakes up. He's like, who do you think it was, right? <laughs> so he looks down at him like, what the hell? Like, I thought you was dead. How are you alive? Come to find out it was all a dream. He woke up from this nightmare that he was having. So now we're in the kitchen for real. And here comes fine ass Mamie with coffee and all of that. And she's like, hey, did you see the headline in the paper? So he's kind of nervous to see the headline, but it just says U.S. boost Vietnam war efforts. Right. And she's like, nah, I really wanted you to see the back, you know, the art section. So he looks in the art section and it says that this guy won first prize as far as his art. She's telling him he used to be, you know, a junkie, but now he's turned artist and he's real famous and she likes his work and she wants to go down and she wants to buy some of his stuff as well. Like, you know, he turned from being a junkie. Now he's a world famous artist and she wants to buy. He's like, of course, of course. So she gives him a kiss and she runs along. Who comes back in town? Malcolm is back in town, finally back home from Africa, from Mecca. Sees Betty. Of course, he's happy to see her. You know, it's been a long time. They've been out there for a long time. Gives her a little smooch and a little kiss. And look at Elise's face. She's like, oh, okay. You know, you know, she loves Malcolm, right? And she's like, Elise, good to see you. You know, they're just happy to see each other. Back home, back in the States, safe and sound. Everything is fine. 
And he's like, well, where's the girls at? She's like, well, I had to send them off because there has been a lot of phone calls. Like, what kind of phone calls? Death threats, right? So it rings and Malcolm picks up the phone. He's like, who is this? And they say some, you know, racial slur or whatever, whatever. And he's like, listen, I want the girls back here. We get these threats all the time. And, you know, Betty's like, listen, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. At least we'll get you back home. So now we are up in the cha-cha-cha club and we're dancing. We see somebody playing the bongos. And who's dancing? Your boy, Nat. Nate is dancing with a pretty young lady in a red dress, right? They're getting down, bum, bum, bum. They go to the bar. And yeah, he's like, okay, you know, he doesn't even know her name. He just met her. And they're getting to know each other and all of this and that. So he's really feeling her. She's feeling him. She breaks out a little bit of like pocket stuff, a little, you know, nose candy. And she takes some and he's like, nah, I don't take that. You know, I don't take that. But of course, he's wide open on her. So he does take it. He's like, yo, it's not affecting me. She's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then it finally kicks in. And yeah, your boy is wide open off of whatever she just gave him. Meanwhile, Elise is back home and she's talking to Mamie. And Mamie, of course, is happy to see her. She sent postcards, you know, to the baby girl. Baby girl's looking at it. But she's been getting letters with no return address. Who is it? It's Omar. You know, you remember Omar tried to kill Malcolm and he was about to marry Elise. But he, you know, found out that she's still connected to Malcolm. So they broke up, whatever. But she's like, uh, why is he messaging me? And we're going to find out later. So now we see your boy Columbo trying to give a gift to Stella. And what is it? It's a necklace. It's a family heirloom of the Eiffel Tower in France. So he's like, yeah, you know, that was my grandma's. Da, 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 da. So, you know, he's trying to be nice or whatever, trying to, you know, do whatever. She's like, no, nah, I can't accept this. Like, this is for the lady of your life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Columbo, we see Columbo's trying to, you know, slide in on Stella. She's like, you know, what would be better to see Paris myself. He's like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I got to keep you safe. And she's like, come on. You know, he's like, I look into it. So here we go in real time. Bumpy actually comes in to his spot. And yeah, he does see Frenchie. And they do test out Sam, crackhead Sam. Well, junkie Sam now. And yeah, he takes it in. You know, he takes it all in. And he's like about to nod out. He's like, come on, tell us the deal. Because he's testing out the products, right? He's testing out the stuff. And he's like, yo, this is good. This is good. This is real good. The best I ever had. But he didn't die. He didn't die. So he's like, listen, man, you know, I'm ready to buy everything, man. Everything all up front. I got the money for it. Remember, he robbed the bank. So he got more than enough money to buy the doji up front. So now we're in this art studio. And this is the artist that they were talking about in the newspaper. Mamie is so impressed by his work. She loves his art. But remember, this is the guy, if you ever watch Atlanta, this is the guy who was the first black president of Disney. That was a funny and great episode. Definitely check that out. But Mamie is so impressed. She definitely wants to bring Bumpy down to see the work. He's like, yeah, I'm working on something for Bumpy. It's going to be like my best work ever. So she's impressed and she's very, very happy to be there. Now, here comes Bumpy. He goes to the police, right, of the precinct. And he's like, listen, man, you know, the, the doogee's coming into the bay. I need you guys to turn a blind eye. Don't do nothing. Don't come down there. He's like, yo, now he's getting the conscience, right? Captain Phil's getting the conscience. He's like, yo, if, you know, you're not saying anything to the Italians, but now you're trying to stop me. Like, come on, man. You're going to do it. Remember, I got some stuff on you. Make sure you just keep the bay clear. All right. So, you know, they're going back and forth on this, but he's going to do what he got to do. Here we go with Nate and the homie, and they're talking, and Nate is like, yo, man, I tried some stuff, man, with this girl. You know, it gave me a little bit of boost because I was a little tired. But, you know, he's like, yo, I want to, um, you know, get into the business. He's like, yo, listen, man, you need to talk to Bumpy. You know, do your due diligence first before you go to Bumpy with this craziness, you know. And, and I said, he's like, all right, I'm going to do my due diligence, and then I'm going to go talk to Bumpy. Right, we'll see what happens. Now, here we go. With your girl, Lise, and she meets up with Omar. I don't know why she's doing this. You know why, because she still kind of has feelings for him. So he sent all those letters while she was away. And she's like, I don't know if I trust you. You know, you tried to kill Malcolm. And he's like, listen, you know, I'm down for the cause. You know, he's like, man, if, if, if I died, I would have had to give my house to my brother. So she laughs and she's like, no, I'm not supposed to laugh. <laughs> so, you know, he's still charming to her. 
still makes her laugh, still makes her feel good. You know, she kind of still has feelings, but again, she doesn't trust him because he did try to kill Malcolm, but he wants to be down with Malcolm. We'll see what happens. Now, we got Battle, we got Bumpy, and we got Frenchie, and they're talking about how they're going to get the Doogee in. Battle has these little boats. You know, Frenchie's like, I don't know, you know, can these boats carry, you know, keys and all of this and that. He's like, yo, we've carried way more than that. You know, we've carried straps and all of this stuff, so it's going to be secure, right? But Frenchie does tell Bumpy, listen, I still got to go. My boss wants us to go to the Italians to see what they have to offer first out of respect. So Frenchie sits down with Colombo. He's like, listen, you know, we're going to do the same thing, man. You know, half now and half later. He's like, well, you know, Bumpy's giving us everything all up front. He's giving us a better offer. So, you know, what can you guys offer? You're going to offer more? You know, what is it? He's like, listen, we've been doing business for years. You know, I don't know if you want to do this. You know, you're going to really piss off the families, you know? And he's like, listen, what can I do to make it better? He's like, just make a better offer. So Columbus like, okay, we're going to better. We're going to make a better offer. We're going to make a better offer. All right. Meanwhile, your boy, Nat, <laughs> man, he's messing with this Colombian chick. He's like, yo, I want to find out, you know, where you got that stuff from because that stuff made me feel good. So she's not trying to give it up. She's not trying to tell him, you know, who it is or whatever it is. But she eventually tells him who she got the stuff from. Now, here we go. Bumpy is drinking his soda pop and they're celebrating because, you know, the doogee's coming in. They say the junkies are going crazy. It's going to sell out really fast. Here comes Columbo with his boys and a bag. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, stop over here. He's like, listen, I hate being the guy, you know, to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, but you're not going to be participating in this uh, new shipment, right? This next shipment. He's like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, already settled it up with Frenchie. And he puts the bag, this bag on the table. He's like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Open the bag. Who is it? It's the head of Frenchie, man. They chopped his head off, man. Crazy, of course. Bumpy's like, what the? What? He's like, hey, man, you know, now I'm going to be the one. We're going to be running the show. And if you want to, you know, to buy, you're going to have to buy from me. Or maybe I shouldn't even give you any, right? So he's like, F you. And he walks out. Man, they chopped Frenchie's head off, man. Dang. So here we go with Mamie, right? And Mamie's talking to Elise. And she's like, I don't know if I trust him. He says some really bad things to me. And, you know, Mamie's like, listen, you're your father's daughter. You got this sense about you. You know the vibe. You know, you can read his vibe. And guess what? Use your talent. Use your gift that you have. And you'll see if he's genuine or not by his actions. Just watch him and use your gift. You know, use your gift. I really like Mamie. I like how, you know... I like their relationship, really, but yeah, maybe a beautiful woman, you know what I mean? So here we go. Stella is like, hey, so did you talk to my dad? What did he say? I want to go away. And he's like, hey, you know, he just wants to keep it safe, right? He wants to keep you safe. And she's like, you're lying. You're lying. You know what I'm saying? And like, who did you talk to? Oh, I spoke to, um, you know, the lawyer dude. Oh, Goldman? Goldman? He's like, yeah. And she's like, nah, that's not his name. He's like... <laughs> Well, you know, I spoke to the guy, you know what I'm saying? Listen, and he walks over and he gives her, you know, that necklace again. He's like, this is the closest you're going to get to France right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to keep you safe. If you go away, I'm dead. If you, if you go away, I'm dead. But she said, you know what? You shouldn't have talked to the feds. Like, this is your fault. This is the reason why you're in the position that you're in. So he walks out. He's like, answer the effing phone. So she picks up the phone and she just hangs it right back up. Now, here we go. Your boy Bumpy's back at the captain spot. He's like, listen, you know, again, a dude may come to you, you know. He's like, yeah, he already did. He wants me to turn a blind eye. He's talking about how he was in the academy and how, you know, they made them feel like, you know, they were forced to, you know, for the blacks to be there. And he didn't deserve to be there, but he proved them wrong. So he's like, listen, man, I can't do this anymore. So he resigns right there on the spot. He's like, yo, I won't be part of this evil anymore. You know, my conscience won't let me do it. You know, I'm done. You know, even though you got the names of all of these guys and myself, I'm resigning. I'm out of here. He's like, you willing to throw your career away right like that just for all of that? He's like, yep, I'm out of here. So no more Captain Fields. He's gone. Now, here we go with Nat Pettigrew. That's his name, Pettigrew. And he's like, Ruben, he's like, who the hell are you? He's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Nat. You know, somebody told me, you know, goodbye for whatever, whatever. So he's like, I work for Bumpy Johnson. He's like, okay. 
So they sit down. He's like, yo, it's going to be 3,000, 3,000 a key, you know, an ounce. He's like, okay, okay, I'll do that. So they agree to meet up. But he's like, yo, who told you about me, huh? Who told you about me? Oh, you know, it's probably the bartender told me about you, man. He's like, hmm, okay, all right, salute, salute, right? So they're going to meet up, and we're going to see what happens with that. Now, Bumpy and Mamie go see the artist, and he's excited. He's like, yeah, everybody knows Bumpy Johnson in Harlem. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see you. I worked on this right here. I, I'm still working on it. But I believe it's my best work I've ever done. So Mamie's excited. She hasn't seen it. Bumpy hasn't seen it. He takes it down and it's a picture of Bumpy. One side with him being a king. The other side with this evil man. It looks like an evil demon, an angel of death, right? Got needles up in his head. I mean, he's looking at her like, what the hell is this? He's like, listen, you know, I hope you don't mind, but this is how I see you, right? I mean, this thing is ugly as heck, right? Looking, making him look like the devil, and that's how he sees him. So he looks at the artist guy, and he's like, man, go F yourself. You don't know me? Of course, the artist guy's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So he takes out his uh, blade, and he slices up the artwork. He's like, you don't know me? You know what I'm saying? You guys are weak. You're like, that's how you see me? You blaming society, you blaming me, you blaming everything, but you're not even blaming yourself, you know, for taking it. So he throws the painting over like he is enraged, he is upset. And he's like, man, you know what? You know, this is what you blame. You blaming all of us for everything, but you not taking responsibility for yourself. He's like, look at yourself, you know? So he's really mad at the whole thing. Of course, the artist, he's upset. He's like, man... And of course, look at Mamie. She's looking at him. And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, he's really upset. He didn't really mean to upset him. It's just that was his interpretation of Bumpy Johnson. Of course, Mamie, she is pissed off. So here we go. Man, Elise is meeting up with this guy once again. And he's like, listen, what's that? She's like, it's the Quran. She's like, listen, it's all about the cause. Swear on the Quran. He swears, and he's like, all right, now it's your turn. Swear that you don't love me, right? Don't you don't, you know, still love me? And she's like, listen, I'm not ready for that, but we already know. She has feelings for dude, but she's going to take her time to see and make sure that he's not just out to be with her, but that he's really down for the cause, for Malcolm's cause, right? So we're going to see what happens with this relationship. They're going back and forth. We'll see what happens. So here comes Ruben, right? He meets at the park. He meets Nat at the park. He's like, yo, all right, where's the stuff at, man? He's like, yo, what's in the car? He's like, all right, go get it. So he goes back to the car. He pulls out, you know, the Cuban girl, right? And he's like, yo, what's, what's up with that? Yo, yo, what you got her doing here? He's like, yo, this is my wife right here, dog. And I found out how you found out about me. So we find out that it's the wife. She steps out of the way. Boom, Nat, boom, shoots him down. He's done. He's like, yeah, look at this. Look at this right here. Well, you lied to me about your husband. I lied to you about being a gangster. I'm out. <laughs> so he leaves him there. Now, again, this is going to turn out bad because that's Jose Battle's boy, too. So here we go back at the crib. And yeah, Mamie is upset. He's like, yo, he's an artist. It was just his interpretation. Why you get so mad? You know, he's like, yo, that's how he sees you. And she's like, listen, I'm starting to believe that, you know, the way that he sees you is exactly how you are. And he's like, oh, is this messing you up? You know, you don't want me to be in the business anymore. You know, is this going to mess you up as far as your, you know, political aspirations or whatever, whatever. So he's kind of laughing and squawking at her and mocking her and all this and that. And she's like, yeah, this is not good for me. And it's only, you know, that stuff is only good for the money. Right. Yeah. They living it up. Yeah. They making a lot of money. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. But she knows that he's like, yo. Columbo stole the, the doogee from me, and now I got a cop from him, you know, like I'm nothing, you know, just like I was back in the day. So he's feeling bad because he lost that deal, and really Columbo stole it from him. And she says the most profound thing. She says, doogee addicts are addicted to dope, and doogee dealers are addicted to selling it. And yes, Bumpy is addicted to selling the doogee, and now it's ruining everything as far as a relationship and everything, right? So now we got the Italians. They got all the doogee. And of course, Columbo's like, yo, anybody heard from Bumpy Johnson? It's like, nah, you know, his folks are going ahead, going around him and buying without him. They copping without him. He's like, yo, his people didn't even approach or nothing? Like, yeah, nah, nah, nobody approached 
us or nothing. He's like, yo, if he doesn't get any stuff, man, his, his business is going to dry up. That's not like him. So they're kind of wondering what Bumpy's next move is. But again, he stole it from him. So now we're back at the art gallery. We see more pics of Bumpy. And we see that artist drew Bumpy's face with devil's horns on it. And man, phew, he was so upset that Bumpy didn't like his interpretation. And yeah, he pretty much OD'd in artistic style. So that's the recap for episode five of Godfather Harlem season three. Family, let me know your thoughts on this one right here. I mean, yes, the angel of death. Crazy, right? Listen, if you're finding me for the first time, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that like button. And I appreciate you all for watching. Definitely comment below and share. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you like this video, definitely hit that like button. Definitely comment below. And share with everybody you know that loves the Godfather of Harlem. I appreciate you all for watching. And until next time, salute.